Hi, I'm Jen from House One, and today I'm showing how to build a rolling kitchen cart. I am just finishing up remodeling my kitchen, and I couldn't resist the urge to add just one more spot for a workspace and storage in the form of a rolling kitchen cart. The simple design I came up with uses two by fours for the legs with a slight taper to soften their look. I sturdied the legs with a frame around the top and another at the bottom that also holds a slatted shelf. To finish it off, I added hooks on the side, a towel bar on the end, wheels on the bottom, and a beautiful butcher block top. To get started, I cut the two by four legs to length and then measured and marked the taper. Next, I set the board on my work surface and positioned a guide for my circular saw with some clamps and then made the cut. If you wanna know how to make a guide like this for your circular saw, search how to make straight cuts with a circular saw on thisoldhouse.com. Next, I cut the rails and shorter stretcher boards to length on my miter saw. I then used a pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes in the ends of each board to prep them for assembly. Now I could lay a long rail between the legs with the tapered edge of each leg facing inward apply glue to the joint, and secure it with pocket hole screws. To size the long stretcher boards that will set against the tapered edges of the legs, I placed them under the legs and then marked the taper. Then I could take the board to the miter saw, adjust the blade, and make the cut. I then drilled pocket holes in each end and installed the board with glue and screws before repeating this process for the other long side of the cart. Next, I cut a one by two cleat to the length of the stretcher, applied glue, and nailed it to the inside of the stretcher board to create a shelf for the three quarter inch thick shelf slats to rest on. I stood one upside down and attached a short rail, and then added the second side. I repeated this on the opposite end to attach the remaining rail. Next, I attached the shorter stretchers level with the height of the longer stretchers. I attached a short cleat to each of the shorter stretchers and then rolled the cart over one more time to install the final support between the sides. It was now time to install the shelf slats. Because the outermost slats wrap around the legs, I first marked the width and depth of the legs on the board and then notched it using a jigsaw. Once I set the slat back in place, I secured it with glue and finish nails. Then I laid the rest of the slats onto the cleats and installed them with equal spacing. With the assembly complete, I applied the finish and got ready to install the hardware. To install the wheels, I marked the center of the base of each leg, and then marked the height of the wheel's thread on my drill bit with painter's tape. I drilled the hole to the depth marked on the painter's tape, and then positioned a threaded T-nut over the hole, where I tapped it in with a hammer to embed the barbs into the wood. Lastly, I threaded the wheel into the T-nut. It was finally time to finish the wood surface, which can be done in so many ways, but I opted for a dark stain to complement our wood floors, protected by a few coats of hard wax. Once dry, I drilled shallow holes in the top edge of the cart and screwed figure eight fasteners to the cart and then to the underside of the butcher block top. Once I added hooks to the side and a towel bar to the end, this kitchen cart was ready to be moved into our new kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more easy DIY projects and tutorials, visit the House One channel on thisoldhouse.com. I'm Jen Largis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.